Welcome back to Robin's Cross, guys. In today's video, we're going to be escaping every single tank in the fish room. And so we're at my favorite fish store, MC Aquatics. Where's the sign? There's the sign. It's right there. <laughs> we're at my favorite fish store, MC Aquatics, guys. And today we're picking up a lot of stuff for the fish room, escape the tanks and make them a little bit more presentable because I've had them bare bottom this entire time. So MC Aquatics hit me up and asked me if I wanted their help to escape these tanks. So that's what we're here to do today, guys. And at the end of the video, I have a code, an awesome deal for you guys. But before we get into the video, please like the video, subscribe channel, and turn on post notifications. Let's get right into the video. And so we're at MC Aquatics. We'll just pull in right here. I'll try not to be too weird, but this is the store. So they got two sections. They've got the fresh water and they got the salt water. So I guess we'll start off with the fresh water and see what kind of stuff we're working with in here. They've got a lot, a little beta fish, a lot of little planet tank fish, a lot of really cool little aquarium fish in here. There's a ton of stuff to look at, but I'm mostly interested in some monster fish. So we're gonna keep our eyes peeled here because as you guys know, the other day, those birds destroyed my 300 gallon aquarium and ate all of my iridescent sharks. But right here, we got another display tank, very nice little discus tank. And there's this one pleco in here that I'm contemplating about getting. I don't know if I'm gonna get it here today right now, but I might get it in a future video when I come back here because I'm definitely going to be coming back here. You guys will see all the stuff in a second, but where'd that pleco go? He's a beautiful, beautiful little pleco. And I saw in this back corner here, right guys, there's some beautiful little koi. Now, I don't think I'm going to be getting any koi right now. We'd have to set something up for them. Theoretically speaking, I could get these koi. I really like this guy with the big scales and the gold color. But what really caught my eye here in this aisle of the fish, guys, now they got a lot of freshwater stuff, but it was these albino iridescent sharks, guys. As you know, we had caught three of them that one day. They they just actually committed, they committed and planned themselves into the glass tank wall. So I'm thinking we're gonna get all of these iridescent sharks to grow out in the fish room. And I'm also going to be getting a lot of substrate so that we could plant these tanks. So I'll show you guys the plant display in a second, but we also got a lot of big African cichlids in here. And right down here, guys, we got a ton of the substrate. So we're gonna get eight bags, one for each tank, and then we're going to get sand to cap that soil with. I'll show you guys how to do all that so you don't see the dirt. You just see sand, but the plants can still root and grow. And I was thinking about possibly, you know, I think I actually will get some of these blue Johanni cichlids. We catch them every now and then, but oh, that one might have babies. Either it has babies in its mouth or it's just picked up a bunch of sand and just nibbling on rocks right now. I can't really tell. I think we will get some of these big blue guys. We don't have any big blue Johannis. We got a couple little Oscars right here these guys are at a really good price $15 we could potentially get those move on through the store let's see what else they got in here so right here they got a lot more African cichlid pretty nice little fish but I think we're going to completely raid their entire plant section guys they got a nice little tier system right here where they have all the planet tank and I'm thinking about buying all of these big swords to put in the fish tank actually we could get a better view on the other side but me and camera girl came to a conclusion what we're going to do is guys we're gonna get practically the majority of these swords maybe even just one one off, so I'm not really too sure. And we're going to get those, right? Set up a pond outside. and Well, we're gonna set up that 60 gallon cube tank outside and use it as a plant grow out. We're going to get some large Amazon swords, the flame swords, some penny wart, some of the ocelot. Um, we're also going to be getting, where is it? The cryptocorn Wendidi. We'll get some of that. There's some Anubius barteri in there. We're definitely gonna be getting that. And there's more display tanks over here. Now I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted to risk getting one of these polyni. So these guys could be really nasty, but these starry night cichlids, they're also very beautiful. Like, look at that guy. He's colored up right now. He's fired up. He's looking gorgeous. And I also thought about, guys, there's just so many options at this store. What if I got this tank? It's 325, tank stand, rock, all that's good stuff. So theoretically, we could set up a nano reef, get a storm clown fish like they got right here, and have a really nice little reef aquarium in my room. However, we will be working on setting up that big one we just got. I got get one more life for it, and then we're ready to rock and roll on that thing. Oh, look, behind you. They got some massive sharks. These are easily the largest bamboo sharks I have ever seen. Look at the size of them. See, now this makes you want to set up a saltwater pond. However, saltwater ponds, extremely expensive. They got a beautiful little strawberry grouper right here. Now, oh, he's he's ready to eat. If I put my finger in there, he might hit it. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> You're right, I probably shouldn't, but he's beautiful. If I had a Predator saltwater tank, I would definitely buy it. But then again, guys, these are all for sale, all up for grab. 15% off with the code that I'm going to give you at the end of the video. And these things actually produce eggs. All these eggs here, we saw it. I'll roll back the clip when I first came through. Were laid by the sharks in this tank. So they've laid one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eggs since we got here. Or actually, seven eggs in, what was it, a week? Seven eggs in like two weeks. I think that they're, I think that they're empty. Is there anything oh, in them? got something in them. Someone in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah? You see the little yoke? Oh, that's cool. Wow. 
Oh, this one doesn't eat it. Oh no, don't eat it. Don't eat the baby. Don't eat the baby. <laughs> Pretty incredible and they also don't just have freshwater guys for you saltwater people. They've got a ton of saltwater tanks on this side. Big racking system, some SPS corals, some little LPS corals, a lot of nice little frack tanks. I should get one of those filters to make it easier to see, but this store has it all. A lot more little corals right here. They got some nice plugs, some nice little suanthids. I mean, these things are beautiful. I might actually be able to help them get even nicer corals for you guys to come by and buy along with myself, but they got a lot of nice corals in here. And over here is their dried goods sections now but they've got a ton of stuff you know we might actually grab some fish food while we're here because you know my fish eat big and they eat a lot but they got all the aquarium equipment and supplies you might need on this whole wall and then on this wall there's another big tier system full of aquarium fish they got some oh we didn't even show the blue ribbon eel we saw look at this guy but they got even more beautiful saltwater aquarium fish they got a nice high fin more eel i'm already getting ideas for future videos here guys tons of really nice fish along with some beautiful red sea aquariums these things are insane. These are big old displays, very beautiful tanks. And right behind us, I think this might be a seven foot fish tank. This thing is huge, like a really big display tank. It is beautiful. They got some nice corals in it. Again, it's a fresh store, guys. So right now, some of the tanks are a little empty. They're just now stockpiling. So now is the time to start coming here and buying stuff, picking stuff up. But with all that out of the way, I'm gonna make a list of things that we're going to bring back to the fish room. We might get some bigger African cichlids. We're definitely getting some plants and we're definitely getting those albino ear doesn't shark so we got my little list here guys we got the large amazon and flame swords the ocelot the penny wart tiger lotus crypt wendity anubius barteri crypto Spiral Alice, four albino iridescent sharks, and eight bags of substrate. So that's everything we're going to be getting and bringing back to the fish room. So I'm gonna check out, bring it all back to the fish room. We'll get to work. And by the end of this video, our fish tank should be looking a lot better. We got a beautiful blue ribbon eel. Now, when I get that saltwater tank set up, we're definitely going to be getting him. I'm gonna come back for certain. If he's still here, he's gonna be in our tank. That is the largest blue ribbon eel I've seen for sale in a long, oh, look at that trigger. That trigger is beautiful. Guys, there's a ton of opportunities here for us to get a lot of cool stuff for the tanks at home. Now guys, and I've got all the plants right here. So we got this bag with some starter plants. We're gonna try to grow and propagate everything we got. So we're gonna throw some soil in there. We got this bag right here with a lot of the bigger rooted plants right here. And we're gonna get them in that 60 gallon cube outside and plant that. And then in the bucket down here is all the fish we're getting today. I just got all the iridescent sharks. They're very, very beautiful. They're gonna grow out just fine. They look fat and healthy, so they're definitely gonna eat. And all there's left to do is bring these back up to the fish room. And now we begin the painstaking task of putting substrate in all these tanks. So the way I'm going to be doing this is I'm going to be taking the fish out of each aquarium, getting some substrate in, and then getting the sand cap over that substrate. I got three bags, 150 pounds total for each of these tanks. I don't know if I'll need all that. I still have another 25 from the last time we put sand in one of these tanks. And I've got those iridescent sharks we bought chilling in this bucket right here on air for when they're ready to go into one of the tanks after we get all of them situated. But before we do all of that, I'm actually going to feed Little Red right there in the 300 gallon tank. Maybe the Pacos eat as well. I'm hoping that's the case. And we're also going to be emptying this tank out, rotating it so the overflow is facing the back of the house, and then using that as our little plant grow out so that when I eventually get a planted tank, we already got some plants situated, adjusted to our water, and possibly growing. So probably gonna be hitting this tank with a lot of fertilizers and things of that nature. Got to get air on it and all that good stuff. But first, we'll prepare some shrimp for a little red. But right now, guys, we're going to drop in some food. I got some shrimp right here. I chunked some up, and then I left some pieces big just to see how they react to it. Um, I don't know if the bass is going to eat any. I think the paku are going to be definite bops. Yep. Look, they're already investigating. They're very curious about it. They might be skittish, but the red tail does not care. Red tail's coming in hot. He's ready for some. Or not. Oh, doubles back. I don't know. Oh, Paku's taking some nibbles. Yeah, Paku's nibbling, yeah. nibbling away. Paku ate one whole. That's awesome. So the Paku are eating. Paku ate another one. <laughs> so I don't know if these pieces are big enough for the red tail to find, but the Paku are definitely making work, light work of all that. Come on, little red. Come on, buddy. Your antennas feel it. Your antennas feel it. Maybe he's just not interested in the shrimp right now, but he keeps going back and forth by it. All these guys seem to be interested. And I was really curious to see if that bass would eat any, and he didn't, but. Bass is thinking about it. Bass is thinking about it. I'm thinking we uh, get some live goldfish for these guys and see if the Garzi, because we haven't offered them any 
cedar fish. Well, the Paku are gonna clean that up for certain. The red tail seems a lot more excited, so I don't know why he's not eating anything right now, but hey, we'll leave him to it. Then now that this tank is ready to be rotated, I'm gonna rotate it basically 180 degrees. So now this way we don't have to actually look at the overflow at all. And this is gonna be a good little tank for these plants. And I'll give you guys an update on everything in the morning when the sun's up, but this right here should be good. So I'm gonna get some dirt in this tank, get these plants in there, get the chlorinated filled up, all that good stuff. But first we gotta get that fish out of that Oscar's mouth, cause if I don't, he's probably gonna choke on it. So he got one of the cichlids. I think it's the cichlid we caught from Summerland. We got, we can't let him try to finish this, cause if we do, it's just too big. I mean, I'll show you guys. I'll pick him up real quick. Look at this. <laughs> Oscars are such gluttonous fish. This thing is way too big for him to eat. You see that? It was halfway in his stomach and halfway out of it. And this was the bigger one of the two. So we're just gonna get him back in there. I gotta clean up all these tanks before I get all the substrate in them. But first I had to do that little rescue mission because otherwise he definitely would have died. But honestly, let's throw this into the bass tank or the 300 gallon tank and see who gets it first. We're gonna drop in that feeder fish and see if anybody takes it. I feel like one of the gars might be the first to get it. I'm not really too sure who's gonna get that, but oh, see, look, the gar's coming down. They're gonna be able to smell it. I really hope it's not the red tail that finds it first. But we'll see if these gars get cheeky. Oh, the bass. The bass has been very interested in everything we've been throwing in. So I'm hoping he's the one, any of them. I mean, there's enough food in this tank. The red tail might get hungry again. He's been super, super active. Literally as soon as the temperature warms up just a little bit, these guys have been doing way better. So I'm gonna get the netting on top of this tank as well. And all these tanks out here situated before we go do the long battle, getting substrate in all of these fish tanks. And I also made an interesting observation with Big Mama, follow me. I noticed when there's commotion at the top of the water, it seems like she gets really interested in it. So I'm wondering if whoever put her in that pond has been hand feeding her this whole time. So let's see if she does the same thing again. I'm gonna start slapping the water. She's not over here. Let's see if she comes over. Look, back there you see her already getting interested. Let's see. Oh, look, 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 she's coming. See that? That makes me curious. Look, all that I did differently was slap the water. So I bet whoever released her into that pond slapped the water to get her attention. She's gonna come up to the water level. Look, look. She might even try to strike my hand, but look, she dips out at the last second. So whatever she was eating in that pond made commotion on the surface, whether it was a bird, somebody trying to hand feed her, I don't know what, but I'm thinking about taking all the cichlids out of this pond and seeing if we could feed her one, hand fed. One more day of warm weather before it goes back to being a little bit colder, probably our best chance to do so. So what we've got right now, guys, are these little Amazon swords. Now, I'm not gonna put them too far back in the tank. We've got some soil down in there and then I just capped it off with sand, kind of as like a test run for when we eventually get to all those tanks in the fish room, just so I could see how far one of the bags of sand goes. Oh, I got all that good stuff, but we're gonna get these guys in here right now. I hope the sand bed is deep enough for these guys to root and do well. I think they should be fine, but we got a lot more plants right here. Now these guys, these crypts, I believe, tear off the roots right there. We're outside, so I can just throw it away. And I'm gonna put them near the front of the tank just because there is this little banister right here. So at some points, the sun's probably gonna be shaded pretty good. But in the front of the tank, they should have the most opportunities to get some light and we got a lot of these little crypts right here these things are really interesting i've never had them before but again just like everything else break off the roots and that'll incentivize the plant to send off some new runners and new roots and grow a lot better or not because i'm weak i'm a shrimp speaking of shrimp this tank i'm gonna get some netting on this as well and we're definitely going to be throwing some platies in here maybe we'll pull up to the abandoned fountain see if i actually left that fish trap in there and then whatever we catch in that we bring back here so these plants have a consistent source of nutrients coming into the tank via the fish waste. But we got another beautiful crypt right here that we're gonna plant over on this side, right there. And then all the potted plants we're just gonna throw in the front all willy-nilly, they'll be fine. You know, they're going nowhere. The rock wool is good enough to keep them alive. So I'm gonna get this tank filled up and then get to work in the fish room. It's gonna be a long day. I might not even be able to update you guys on the fish room tonight, just depending on how dirty those tanks get. We got a lot of work tonight. I gotta clean the entire house. So now after adding all of the substrate into some of the tanks, I mean, they're still a little bit dirty. I did already feed the fish room, but all the tanks for the most part, I mean, it didn't go exactly how I intended. The fish have messed up already a lot of the substrate, but these guys now have sand. They're still clearing out just a little bit. We got some substrate back here in the Everglades tank right here. And you know, it's looking good. They seem to enjoy it. The water's only cloudy because the soil itself 
is dirty. And those iridescent sharks I got into one of these tanks, they're all doing really good. I'll show you guys the netting outside that we just did as well. Also, if you're wondering how you can save 15% off all the store items and livestock, both online on their website, as well as at all their locations in Colorado, Texas, Virginia, and in South Florida, Miami, use my code ROBMCA15 and you will save so much money. Realistically, the more money you spend, the more you save. Spend $100, you save 15, it's actually 85. Spend 200, you save 30, it's actually 170, et cetera, et cetera. And so use this coupon wisely. You could use it as many times as you like. They do both fresh and salt, so very good deal. We're gonna go check out the netting. I'll show you guys those guys, give you guys an update on them. Also, wait, before, before we leave the fish room, before we leave the fish room, what are your guys' thoughts on setting this up as a 110 gallon discus aquarium? Let me know. All I need to do is build a stand for it. I already got a sump for it. Honestly, it'd probably be a really cool little tank for them. And this is what that tank is looking like where we're going to be growing out some plants. We will have to go to the abandoned fountain catch out some more mollies. Probably will be doing that in the very near future. And if you look at all the tanks, guys, so we got some netting everywhere. So there's netting on this tank. On the 300 gallon tank, we've laid down some netting right here. It's gonna keep those predators out of there. And then also on the 120 gallon tank right here, we got some netting. I put on six clips each of the tanks just to make sure it's laid out the best way possible. Oh yeah, close the gate. <laughs> close the gate. <laughs> There we go. All right, no dog's gonna be raiding us, but that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like the video, subscribe channel, and turn on post notifications. Use the code ROBMCA15 for 15% all livestock and dry goods at all their locations and their online store, so anybody anywhere could get some stuff. That's part of why I love the deal so much. If you see anything you'd like us to tweak and add and get for the future, comment it down below and let me know, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Deuces.